This video is part of a series of presentations covering the key concepts of multithreading and synchronization. This presentation provides a deep dive into the issue of race conditions that can occur when shared resources are incorrectly modified from multiple threads. Recollect that threads can be created in a program from any method in a program. So for example, if you have the DoIt method, then typically we'll use two loops, one loop to first create the threads, and then one loop to join the threads. So the first loop, when it runs, it is going to create a vector of threads. So each iteration of this for loop as it runs starts creating threads, and these threads start running asynchronously. And then we have another loop that wait for these threads to finish. And as these threads finish, they join in the main thread and all of the threads finish running. Keep in mind the slowest thread determines the overall runtime of this loop and the overall runtime of this program. Of course, you can use multiple threads with objects. You can use either one object per thread, so that means each thread works with its own object, or you can have one shared object that is used by all of the threads. Remember to use the stdref wrapper method to pass by reference when working with threads. Care must be taken when sharing variables or objects between multiple threads. It is important to ensure that we coordinate or synchronize updates to shared values from multiple threads. Consider a intersection. Here, the intersection represents a shared variable or a memory location that is being shared and needs to be updated by multiple threads. So if two threads simultaneously go enter the intersection and try to update the uh, variable, this causes incorrect program behavior, and such unsynchronized updates to shared variables cause incorrect program operations, and this scenario is called a race condition. Let's look at this concept from an example. Assume that we have this do it method. Note that here we are passing the parameter i by reference to the do it method. So when we create multiple threads, here we are going to pass x, which is the argument in the main method, as a reference to each thread that is being spun up in the main method. So in this situation, assume you have those five threads that are being created in the main method, all of the parameters for each one of these threads are all referring to the same object x that has been defined in the main method, and every thread tries and modifies or increments x via the parameter i in the thread method. Here, x variable is shared and updated by many threads, thereby causing a race condition. Note that the key uh, value here, key thing to note here is the value of x after the threads join is indeterminate. That means we will not know what is the value that's going to be in x. It is essentially going to be an incorrect or possibly just a random value that is being stored in x because multiple threads have incorrectly tried to update x simultaneously. Let's look at it in a little bit more detail on what's going on here. So here, notice that again, we have the variable x, and we are trying to modify it, except here we are going to do it repeatedly in a while loop, just to illustrate an example. So keep in mind, when we are trying to modify a variable, modifications essentially involve three steps. Notice that we have only one C++ instruction, x++, but internally, the CPU has to do three operations in order to accomplish that increment of variable x. First, it has to read the variable from memory into a CPU register so that the ALU can perform the increment operation. So the variable is read, the ALU performs the operation, and the resulting value is stored back into memory. And this cycle continues for each iteration of the while loop. Of course, some of these steps may be optimized away by the compiler, but in this example, assume that all of these three basic steps are going to occur. Now the issue happens in a race condition, what happens is multiple threads try and update the same variable x, and the result is some inconsistent values being stored into x. That means the threads are stepping on each other's toes, trying to modify the same variable, causing the incorrect results to be stored 
back into variable x. And this is called a race condition. Note that reading the values or variables is not an issue. It is only modifying or updating those variables or shared variables is an issue. So if you're not planning to modify a variable, make sure you use const, thereby you accidentally avoid these types of race conditions. So const is your friend here. So be const happy in all of your C++ programs. Let's again trace the operation of these race conditions just so that we have a strong mental model on what happens in a race condition. Let's look at this loop again. So let's assume that we have two threads and a shared variable x. Here let's go through first a scenario where expected uh, behavior happens. That means the, other, the expected behavior is similar to what the mental model that we are going to have. So let's say x has starts with the value 1. So thread 1 starts running, while thread 2 is not yet scheduled by the operating system. So thread 1 reads the value 1, increments the value of x, and writes 2 back into memory. Then thread 2 starts running. It reads the value 2 from memory, increments the value, and stores the value 3, and the threads move on. We expect this behavior to happen, and we mentally have this mental model of threads taking turns to update x. However, in practice, the expected behavior doesn't happen. Instead, we get what is known as a race condition where the two threads start running. Again, let's assume that x is initialized to 1. First, thread 1 might read the value of x as 1. Then the operating system might context switch or in a multi-core machine, thread 2 might start running. It may also read the value 1. So now notice that two threads have read the value 1. The second thread might update it first and writes the value 2. Later on, thread 1 catches up and writes the value 2. So now the result becomes 2, which is incorrect given that we expect a value of 3 as shown in the expected behavior. So this is what happens in a race condition where threads step on each other's toes and the resulting value that is stored in the shared variable is completely incorrect or unpredictable. So it means you will not be able to determine what is the actual final value that is going to be stored in the shared variable x. There are several approaches to avoiding race conditions. We have seen a few of these before. First one is the data parallel or synchronization free programs. Here, the idea is the program is designed such that threads do not update or write to shared memory location. That means each thread operates with its own memory locations that is preset for each thread. So that way, threads never step on each other's toes. So this, in this scenario, you can think of these uh, threads as operating on their own memory locations. So if you think of these as cars, here they all stick to their own lanes or memory locations, and they never interfere with each other's operation. So here there is no synchronization required and the threads operate smoothly. Let's look at it from the perspective of uh, a program. Assume that we have a list of input values. Um, here, each thread would operate on an independent set of inputs and generate independent set of outputs. So you can think of each entry in the vector as an independent lane. So notice that here, even though we are using a single vector object, each thread operates on a specific entry in the vector to generate a specific uh, entry in the output vector. So here, threads work on pre-allocated values and the threads never add or erase entries from this list. They only update this uh, in corresponding entries. And this is a, a safe way to operate with multiple inputs and multiple outputs without needing any synchronization. And there are a lot of programs that are designed this way, and these are called data parallel or synchronization-free multi-threaded programs. Of course, the other approach for multi-threading is to use synchronization because there are applications where threads will have to update or write to shared memory locations in order to implement certain types of algorithms or problem-solving scenarios. So here, care must be taken to ensure that we coordinate or synchronize threads. So here, similar to how traffic lights work in programs, we have this concept of mutex or semaphores that are used to avoid uh, concurrent updates by threads. So let us say we have two cars that want to enter 
uh, use the shared variable, which is like an intersection. They take turns. That means they lock the intersection so only one thread or one car can pass through. Then they unlock it, and then the other thread or other car can pass through the intersection. So here, remember, semaphores and mutex are concepts that are supported by the operating system that can be used to avoid concurrent updates. So here in our thread method, in addition to taking the shared variable x, we also take a parameter called mutex. So threads will typically first, before doing any operations uh, on the shared variable, they will first lock the mutex. This is similar to locking the intersection so that the thread is says, it, it has the right to pass through that intersection. So it first locks the intersection, does the operations, and then unlocks the intersection so that another thread can go through that intersection. And we look at more examples on how we can use mutexes and some more sophisticated constructs like condition variables to develop programs that require synchronization and develop synchronization-based programs in an effective manner in the last three parts of this presentation series. Keep in mind here the mutex is shared between the different threads. So a thread will logically lock or unlock these mutexes so that it is safe to, for it to operate on the shared resources. Race conditions often happen in many programs, and the GNU compiler collection and the libraries provide what are called sanitizers or automatic checkers to ensure programs do not suffer from race conditions. Of course, here in order to use the sanitizers, the program must be recompiled with thread sanitizers. So for example, here, when you were compiling with the G++ compiler, you would also add the dash F for feature or function, sanitize equals thread. So that means we want to do sanitization on threads to check for race conditions. So when you run the program uh, here, if there are race conditions in a program, the, the libraries will output errors and warnings wherein it will show you where the um, race condition has occurred. So here it says there is a race condition on thread 2 in a method called do it at line number 5 in that program. So now you know that there is something wrong on line number 5 in a program. That means there's a race condition there. And you can go and inspect that line and see why a race condition has occurred there and you'll be able to fix the race condition uh, appropriately. So using threat sanitizers uh, helps us to detect and avoid race conditions in many of the multi-threaded programs. All right, that covers the basics of race conditions and a deep dive into race conditions. Keep in mind, we have already seen basics of threads and how to develop multi-threaded programs and measure timings. In this presentation, we went through uh, race conditions and did a deep dive. The next part of the series, we look at threading without synchronization in two parts, and then we look at threading with synchronization. Hope you found this presentation interesting. Make sure you check out the other parts in this series of presentations.